Have you ever played Kerbal Space Program? Is it a useful tool for teaching the basics of orbital mechanics? That's a brilliant question. Yes, I have played Kerbal Space Program. I play it with my son. We play it a lot. And yes, it is a superb tool for learning orbital mechanics because it's accurate. And actually, um, I, I was at, we were filming at NASA a while ago for something with the BBC. And I was interviewing one of the engineers who calculates the trajectories of space probes out. If you want to send a spacecraft to Saturn or Jupiter or the outer reaches of the solar system or Mars, you have to calculate the trajectory very carefully, obviously. And uh, she said that they um, use Kerbal initially just to get a feel for what to do. They can use Kerbal and, and then they can, uh, they, obviously, then they do the accurate version. But you can get a, a really good feel for sending spacecraft around and, and, and you know, intersecting planets and the, the transfer orbits and so on, because it's all correct, right? So the model in Kerbal is Newton's laws. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful way. Um, that also, I remember, I'm going to name drop, because I remember talking to Buzz Aldrin about, because he has a PhD in orbital mechanics, and, and he was telling me, how difficult it was initially because he did some of this fly flying the things right in space how difficult it is to dock because if you're in a spacecraft and you're trying to dock and you accelerate in an orbit you don't just like oh, you don't just go forward so you can dock you go up and so so it's as you change your velocity to try and approach something to dock with it you change altitude because the velocity and the altitude are coupled in an orbit and so you have to kind of do these kind of strange maneuvers and you find that you see that in Kerbal as well. So it's quite you realize actually that it's quite difficult to dock <laughs> and um, you can do it. I mean, Kerbal, you can cheat in Kerbal now. There are all kind of little things that allow you to dock a bit easier. But if you just try it completely manually, um, then it's uh, it's quite an education, actually. And you then realize that these people, Buzz Aldrin, you know, Jim Lovell, all, all those Apollo astronauts, Rusty Schweiger, the, a lot of people I've had a great honor to meet. You realize what they were doing because in the 1960s, they were flying these things around. I mean, think about an aircraft in the 1960s um, the, uh, and with all that complexity and all that complication and no computer power to speak of to help them do it. It's very hard, right? So it's hard to dock manually and Kerbal teaches you that. What's your favorite film? My favorite film, Andrea. That's a that's a great question. Um, I I suppose it's almost predictable, isn't it? That that it would be a science fiction film. But I've always loved science fiction, um, and of the great science fiction films that I love, um, I've always loved two thousand and one, which is so predictable that I probably shouldn't say it, but it is a masterpiece. And actually, Horizons in part is inspired by 2001. I got a big book recently, which is the, the history of 2001, the development of the film. And Kubrick had initially called it Journey Beyond the Stars. And the idea behind it was to explore humanity's unlimited potential in space. Um, and that's really part of what Horizons is about. It's about, um, our potential, what could we become? So there's a hint of science fiction, some beautiful artwork by an artist called Eric Vernquist, who imagined futures in space, O'Neill cylinders, and uh, a civilization around a black hole who, who, who are extracting energy from the black hole through something called the Penrose process, which I, which I'll, I'll, I'll talk about, I think, in the live shows. I haven't, I, I haven't gone into it in much detail, actually, in the live shows, but now you ask that question, I think I should explain what that civilization is doing. So there's an element of what we can become. There's an element of optimism in the shows, which really was inspired by 2001. Um, but also, uh, I, when I was 11, I just got to senior school, and times were very different then, in the, in the late 70s. And uh, the first film that I saw at my school's cinema club was Alien when I was 11. <laughs> so they sat the 11 year olds down in, in a Friday evening <laughs> and we saw, we saw Alien 
and uh, and it really did make quite an impression on me in many levels. It's, and it's always been one of my favorite films. I mean, it is a masterpiece. So so I I love Alien, uh, Blade Runner. I came to a bit later actually as a film, although it was around at the same time. Um, so those and also obviously because I was I grew up in the seventies, Star Wars was a huge made a huge impression. As did Star Trek, the motion picture actually, which I think is a really underrated film. Um, so so there you go. So there's a load of science fiction um, that I could list. I also worked on a, on a film in some depth, actually, a film called Sunshine, um, which was written by Alec, Gar Alec Garland, um, who wrote, most famous probably for 28 Days Later, um, but uh, and directed by Danny Boyle, who's most famous for tons of things, I suppose, including the Olympic opening ceremony. Uh, brilliant, wonderful director. And it was wonderful working with Alex and Danny at some um some length actually and some depth and also the actors on that film so i worked with Claire and also andrea i actually worked on a, a science fiction film uh, a long time ago now over 10 years ago i worked on a film called sunshine which was written by alec garland alec <laughs> alex is it that's an alan partridge thing isn't it alec alan <laughs> alec Garland, um, <laughs> Alex Garland, and um, and uh, directed by Danny Boyle. <laughs> I should, I, I should... <laughs> Alan, Alan, it's Alan. <laughs> Alex Garland, who's probably most famous actually for writing Twenty Eight Days Later, um, but uh, he's a wonderful writer, and, and Danny Boyle, of course, a magnificent director. And he had a wonderful cast as well, Killian Murphy, Michelle Yeoh, Rose Byrne. Um, and the, the, so I worked as a, a consultant on that, but ended up working in, in really closely actually with the, direct, with the um, actors, particularly actually Killian Murphy. And um, we went to CERN together actually, um, which is where I was working at the time. And he observed scientists in action. So we just we, we sat in meetings and he just watched the way that scientists interact because he played a physicist and his job was to save the human race. So the conceit was that the, the sun is dying. This, by the way, when I first got the script, I said to Alex, um, this is this is not this is not going to happen. Right. So and, and he said, well, yeah, but it is the that you can't change that. That is the, the core of the thing. The sun is dying and we're going to fix it. Well, both of those things are not happening at the moment. I, mean, I suppose you could say the sun is dying. It, it is using or uh, burning through 600 million tons of fuel every second, but you can fit a million Earths inside it. So it's got enough nuclear fuel, hydrogen in its core for uh, billions of years, for four, five billion years, let's say. So, so it's not dying in any, on any human time scale. If it did for any reason, then there is no way we could do anything about it. <laughs> Putting that aside, the film's not really about that, and I love the film. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend that you see it. It's a wonderful uh, exploration of uh, the power of nature and human, uh, the, human, the human reaction to the power of nature. The sun almost becomes a deity in the film. And um, there's a wonderful moment at the end where Kill... Uh, I also worked on a science fiction film a long time ago called Sunshine, which is, I, I think, uh, I, I love the film. I think it's in some sense an underrated film. Um, it was written by Alex Garland, who perhaps is most famous for writing 28 Days Later, uh, but uh, and directed by Danny Boyle, who's kind of the most famous for <laughs> winning an Oscar <laughs> and lots of things. Um, and... Uh, it was just a, a wonderful experience to see how a film's made. I was the science consultant on it. And they, they sent me the script, actually, initially. And um, the, the story behind the film is that our sun is dying and humanity has mounted. It was able to mount two missions to go and fix the sun. One of them was lost and the, the, the film plays out on the second mission. So we don't know why the first one was lost. It's a wonderful conceit, except I pointed out to Alex very early on that it's nonsense because the sun... <laughs> It's not going to die 
on human time scales. It's going to be dying many billions of years when it runs out of hydrogen fuel. It's burning 600 million tonnes a second of hydrogen into helium, but it's very big. You can fit a million Earths inside it, so it's a long time uh, for the sun to burn. And even if it did die for some bizarre reason, then there's nothing we could do about it because it's very big and we're very tiny. Um, but given that, the film's not really about that. The film's about our relationship with nature, our relationship with the power of nature. Um, and uh, I spent a lot of time working with the with the actors in the end, particularly Killian Murphy, who plays a physicist called Kappa. And he came to CERN with me and observed scientists in action so he could see how to, to pitch his performance and his character. And it was a wonderful experience for me to see how films made and to see how great actors work. Um, and great directors and great writers. So uh, yeah, so Sunshine. So if you haven't seen Sunshine, I strongly recommend it. I think it's a a magnificent film. Um, and understand that, uh, in my view, it's a very deep film because it's about our relationship with the power of nature. Professor Brian Cox, Horizons, a 21st century space odyssey, live on stage, using state-of-the-art LED screen technology Theatres and arenas will be filled with images of faraway galaxies, alien worlds, supermassive black holes, and a time before the Big Bang.